We cannot diagonalize some matrices due to a lack of independent eigenvectors. In order to overcome this problem, we are going to extend the notion of an eigenvector, the so-called generalized eigenvectors. In this lecture, you will see what they are and how we can find them. So what is the idea of a generalized eigenvector? Well, that is a vector not equal to zero of a matrix A corresponding to lambda. When do we have such a generalized eigenvector? If a minus lambda i to the power p, so you compute a minus lambda i and take to the power p, times this factor v is equal to zero for some integer p. So remember, for normal eigenvector, we have a minus lambda i times v equals zero, and now for a generalized eigenvector, we put an integer p, some power p here, so we can have higher powers now here. Consequence is, of course, that if this equality holds, then this generalized eigenvector is in the null space of a minus lambda i to the power of p. So that is the idea. We are not only looking anymore at a minus lambda i, but also we are looking at a minus lambda i squared, a minus lambda i to the power of 3, and so on and so forth. So as we have seen before, for p equals 1, our generalized eigenvector becomes a normal eigenvector. Ah, second remark, now let p be the smallest I, uh, p such that this equality holds. So say it holds for p is 10, but not for p is 9, a7, and so on and so forth. So p is the smallest integer such that a minus up to i to the power of p equals 0. Then we can compute u equals a minus up to i to the power of p minus 1 times v. That's not equal to 0 because, well, that's what we assumed that p was the smallest number. Now if you compute a minus up to i times this u, you get a minus up to i times a minus up to i to the power of p minus 1 equals a minus up to i to the power of p times v equals 0 vector. And then we see, hey, then we have a minus up to i times u equals 0. So that means that this u is an eigenvector. So if you have some generalized eigenvector, belonging to some p uh, like 10 or so, then if you compute a minus up to i to the power 9 times this v, you get an eigenvector back. That's a second uh, remark. Now let's do an example to see whether we can uh, compute these generalized eigenvectors. Here we have our matrix A. Uh, first we need our lambda, so we compute p lambda, so you add the minus lambda over here and over here. Compute the determinant, so you get 4 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus minus 1, so plus 1. Uh, work out the brackets, yields uh, lambda squared uh, minus 4 lambda minus 2 lambda, so minus 6 lambda, or times 2 equals 8 plus 1 equals 9. So lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9, and you can factorize that as lambda minus 3 squared. So that means that we have an eigenvector of sorry, eigenvalue lambda equals 3 with algebraic multiplicity 2. Then we uh, are going to compute the eigenvector. So first we compute a minus 3i. We get this matrix over here. And we can solve uh, a minus 3i times x equals 0. Uh, so we find the null space of a minus 3i. Done that many times. That uh, is the span of 1, 1 only one independent eigenvector. So we have, for example, v1 equals 1, 1. So you see we have a two by two matrix. Uh, we have uh, one a normal eigenvector. Let's see whether we can find a generalized eigenvector. So in order to do so, we compute a minus 3i squared. So here we have a minus 3i, another a minus 3i. Use, for example, row column rule. You get one times one, Uh, plus minus 1 times 1 equals 0, and also for all the other elements, only zeros. So a minus 3i squared is already the zero matrix. So that means that in particular the null space of this a minus 3i squared is everything, is R2. So we can find a second generalized eigenvector. We can take, for example, uh, 1, 0. E1 is our second generalized eigenvector. 
And then we uh, uh, see something uh, happening, uh, something special happening. If we compute now a minus delta i times this v2, so this fact matrix times v2, we get our v1 back. So we can make sort of a cycle. So if we start out with v2, then we multiply with a minus 3i, I get v1. And if we multiply again with a minus 3i, we get zero vector. And this is something we will see happening later on much more often, that the generalized eigenvectors are going to form what we call a cycle or sequence of vectors. Starting with the last one, you multiply with a minus 3i, you get the next one and so on and so forth. That is something we will see much more uh, happening much more often for larger matrices and upcoming web lectures.